talus fractures and dislocations. This is from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series, Version 3. I'm um, Saka Brahman narrating. These are slides by Dr. David Sanders. And in the first two videos, we talked about talus neck fractures assessment and then surgical management. So I'm going to have a whole uh, video now just on complications. Uh, osteonecrosis or AVN, malunion, nonunion, arthritis. So let's get into this. So uh, these are infrequent injuries, so relatively small case series. Um, and you can see that um, not an insignificant rate of complications, right? So worse results with comminution and open fractures, osteonecrosis, you can see the numbers here with Hawkins 2 and 3, um, you know, 50 to 65% uh, uh, collapse with uh, osteonecrosis. So not all, um, but uh, certainly quite a, quite a few um, that go on uh, to, to AVN can collapse. Um, other studies have showed lower rates of AVN, and um, as you can see in the studies on the right, um, in uh, uh, Canale's initial uh, uh, publications, the sort of classic uh, numbers that you may see in some of the textbooks and exam questions, Hawkins 1, 15%, 2, 50%, 3, 85%, and Hawkins 400% osteonecrosis. So, it's a nice uh, way to sort of remember it. Uh, Fred Behrens had shown in their series 25% uh, osteonecrosis, and uh, Dr. Ibrahim and colleagues had shown about 20% um, osteonecrosis after talus fractures. So unfortunately, it is a real uh, phenomenon. What's not totally clear is how much that actually affects clinical outcomes. It's not quite the same as you see, for instance, in like the femoral head, you know, osteonecrosis can be predictably disabling. It's not quite, quite as similar to the case with the talus. Uh, so osteonecrosis, you need to know there's increased rates with, as you go up in number with Hawkins classification, but AVN maybe does not always equal a poor result. It can lead to a poor result, but not automatically. MRI, you know, we showed you some pictures of MRI demonstrating um, you know, osteonecrosis, it's probably not prognostic in terms of, well, if you get an MRI early on, can you tell is it, is, if it's vascularized or not? Well, it doesn't seem to be helpful as far as we know. Um, and it's still kind of a question, does early ORAF minimize AVN? I mean, it used to be that, well, you have to operate on these like immediately, like an emergency in order to minimize AVN. We've kind of gone away from that a little bit. Um, although we certainly want to reduce dislocations, we're not like treating these neck fractures as emergencies uh, anymore. Um, so Hawkins sign is something that you should be aware of. Uh, this Hawkins classification is Hawkins sign. So Hawkins sign is this x-ray finding six to eight weeks post-op in which you get this subchondral lucency Okay, and that's supposed to imply revascularization. So the Hawkins sign is actually a good thing. It's what you want. Um, again, we showed before, imaging can potentially show after the fact that now you're developing decreased vascularity and possible osteonecrosis. So here's an example of uh, Hawkins 3 goes on to osteonecrosis. And this is demonstrated here by sclerosis of the bone, radiographic sclerosis. Uh, no significant collapse here, okay, but you can clearly see that. Here's an example, uh, bilateral injuries um, treated with open reduction internal fixation at two years, pain, stiffness, limp, and you can see that uh, certainly there is um, you know, some evidence here of ankle joint collapse and uh, some collapse of the uh, Taylor dome uh, at the anterior ankle joints, right? So. Uh, it's definitely an issue, um, and um, pre-collapse, you can try to modify the weight bearing, cast them, um, but compliance can be difficult. It's hard to know whether or not this really works. Uh, Post-collapse, you, know, you can kind of just observe and see how they do, or you may have to con consider a, uh, a fusion if necessary. So what about malunion? Malunion is common because these are comminuted fractures, and if they're not adequately recognized, um, and that uh, 
comminution uh, medially is not picked up, then sometimes they will heal with varus. And this is not easy to pick up if you're not used to looking for it. So um, if you don't get a standing look at the patient, if you don't get standing views, you may not recognize this other than the patient may be complaining of pain. So you really have to look carefully and notice the difference here You know, with this um, posterior view of the heels bilaterally. You can see there is that varus um, clinical examination, midfoot supination. So here you can see there's a dorsal malunion on x-ray and um, with um, varus collapse you can uh, end up like this. So um, if you have greater than three degrees of malunion, this can lead to decreased subtalar range of motion as well. And um, greater than two millimeters of um, uh, malunion can lead to altered subtalar contact forces. Um, and that can lead to uh, post-traumatic arthritis as well. So unfortunately, this can cause more pain, less satisfaction, less ankle motion, less subtalar motion, and worse uh, functional outcomes. So these can be treated uh, by reconstructive methods if it gets to that. Tailless osteotomies, calcaneous osteotomies, possibly even midfoot osteotomies, and Achilles lengthenings uh, to straighten them out. What about arthritis? Well, um, here's a clinical, uh, or, sorry, rated graphic example of uh, post-traumatic subtalar arthritis. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's something that can absolutely lead to pain, stiffness, uh, and in many cases may require surgical treatment like arthro, you know, like um, arthrodesis. Um, and uh, these are not infrequent. You can imagine with an injury like this, the incidence of post-traumatic arthritis can be uh, 30 to 90 percent. Uh, and again, typically involving the subtalar joint where you uh, can have um, injury. And again, we talked about having to inspect the uh, subtalar joint clear debris um, with your initial surgical management. Uh, but um, any uh, malunion, malreduction, et cetera, can lead to uh, post-traumatic arthritis as well as the subtalar joint. What about non-union? It's actually not quite that common as you might think, um, even when you get osteonecrosis. Uh, if you do get a non-union, though, it can result in you know, latent uh, malalignment, and uh, that's something you would have to um, uh, deal with with the reconstructive methods. So I'm going to stop there, and uh, we will try to wrap up by talking more about um, Taylor body fractures a little bit and um, then get into Taylor process fractures uh, before we conclude this lecture. Thanks.